For more than 55 years and a large part of the world, a little longer if you count the Ford Tourner's Transit that was released in Germany in the 1950s, the Ford Transit, or tranny as it's become known colloquially in some markets, don't, has been a regular sight on the roads of the world. And today it made its first step towards a new chapter with the global reveal event of the 2022 Ford e-Transit, a fully electric transit that Ford says will play an integral part in its transition towards a zero tailpipe emission future. Today, we're gonna go over what we learned from Ford's official reveal event. But first, I think it is important to note the historical importance of the transit brand and detail why it going electric is such a big deal. Because while many countries are more than familiar with the transit, some markets, mainly those in North America, are far less familiar. In its 55-year history, spanning a total of four different generations, the transit has been used as a delivery vehicle by millions of people. It's been used as a mobile base of operations for independent contractors and fleet operators. It's been available as both a commercial van and a chassis cab variant, with everything from car transporter to pickup bodies available. If you can think of a work-related duty for a vehicle, the chances are a transit has done it at some point or another. And of course, in Europe, it gave rise to the term white van man, a derogatory term used to describe the usually aggressive and often dangerous driving style of those who drive usually white transits for their work, often with little or no regard for other road users or in fact their own vehicle. It's helped countless people move home, become a mainstay of rental fleets, and its passenger carrying variants have carried everything from dignitaries to members of the press, provided community transportation solutions in remote areas, and of course, become the go-to choice for amateur sports teams looking for a way to get a dozen or so people and their sports equipment to an away match. It's been turned into ice cream vans, into school buses, and go anywhere adventure vehicles with lifted suspension and all wheel drivetrain. And in Europe, you'll very often see it in duty as a police prisoner transport vehicle. In the US, the transit doesn't quite have the same heritage as it wasn't introduced into North America until 2013 in its most recent generational guise. That vehicle, co-developed between Ford North America and Ford Europe, quickly became popular with customers in the market, replacing the discontinued E-Series van. While it had some differences to its European counterpart, only all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive was offered in the US rather than the more common front-wheel drive found in Europe, American customers quickly took to the transit and it became the most popular van in the US in pretty short order. Which brings us to today's announcement and reveal of the 2022 Ford e-Transit. Based off the mid-cycle refresh to the fourth generation Transit, this all-electric vehicle will be sold in North America with a choice of eight different configurations, encompassing three different roof heights, three different body lengths, and both a chassis cab and a cutaway cab model. The cutaway cab, for those interested, is essentially designed for coach building companies to design and build specialist bodies for the transit, ranging from things like ambulances and food trucks through to RVs. In Europe, a total of 25 different variants will be offered for sale. Ford was keen to point out in its press event this morning that it wants the Ford e-Transit to offer decent load carrying capabilities, quoting the North American e-Transit as having a target maximum payload of 3,800 pounds, that's 1,723 kilograms. The cutaway versions, meanwhile, will be rated for up to 4,290 pounds, that's 1,945 kilograms. As those who are in the courier business will attest as well, it's not always just payload weight that's important, but also total cargo volume. According to Ford, if you pick the highest roof line and longest wheelbase variants of the van, you'll be able to carry 487.3 cubic feet of cargo, or if you prefer, just shy of 13,799 litres. Powering the e-Transit is a single 198 kilowatt, 
266 horsepower electric motor. It develops up to 316 pound feet, a little under 430 newton meters of torque. Powering the rear axle, which itself has been redesigned to include a heavy duty semi trailing arm suspension, the Ford e Transit hasn't been built for speed per se, but for heavy duty robustness. Under the load bay floor is a lithium ion battery pack with a usable 67 kilowatt hours of capacity. Because the e-transit is sold in several different variants and the more surface area at the front of the vehicle, the higher the drag the vehicle will experience and thus vehicles with higher roof lines will have poorer energy efficiency than those with lower roof lines. Well, range depends on which vehicle you buy. Ford quotes approximately 126 miles of range, that's 202 kilometres per charge, for the lowest roof, most aerodynamic Ford e-Transit. That drops to 108 miles, 173 kilometres per charge, for the highest roof variants those figures being on the EPA test cycle. It's not clear, though, if those figures include a laden vehicle or not, and I'm trying to find that out. When I know, I will, of course, share. In Europe, the overly optimistic WLTP test cycle says the e-transit will manage, quote, up to 350 kilometres, that's approximately 217 miles, on the combined test cycle. But as we all know, the WLTP test cycle is usually a little hard to achieve in the real world. If you're looking at that and complaining about how poor the e-transit's range is, you're probably not alone. But when you consider the fuel economy of a petrol or diesel engine transit compared to, say, a family hatchback or crossover with an ICE engine, you'll still see that the large commercial vehicle is always going to have less impressive economy. Sadly, that is physics. Even a pickup truck is generally better as it has a smaller frontal area and usually doesn't have quite as much bulk to carry around all of the time, which of course affects the vehicle's drag. The other thing to bear in mind is that while there are some rural delivery routes for companies like UPS and FedEx that are in excess of several hundred miles or several hundred kilometres a day, most urban and suburban routes are anywhere from 10 to 20 miles all the way up to around 160 miles. If we assume that as an average a delivery truck driver should be able to manage a day's delivery on one or maybe two charges, we won't be far off. Which brings me to charging. The e-Transit features DC quick charging as standard, and it's charging its liquid-cooled battery pack at up to 150 kilowatts peak at compatible DC quick charging stations. A 15-minute charge could add up to 45 miles of range, which means a standard half-hour lunch break should give a truck enough range to complete its daily duties. While there will undoubtedly be those independent contractors who require more range per day than the e-Transit can offer, it's also worth noting that for the overwhelming majority of self-employed business people who would own such a vehicle, think plumbers, electricians, builders and other skilled tradespeople, they're likely only going to cover a fairly small radius of their homes in all but extremely rural locations. As a side, I should throw in here that the e-Transit can also be configured with an onboard 2.4 kilowatt inverter, which should allow tradespeople to power tools on site without needing to rely on a separate petrol-powered generator. That in of itself should make for a more pleasant work environment. Which brings me to the connected onboard systems that Ford is promoting for the e-Transit. Like the upcoming Ford Mustang Mark E, the e-Transit will come with a suite of telematics as standard, thanks to a built-in 4G connection. This will allow owner-operators to check on their e-Transit's state of charge, precondition the cabin, and do all of the other things that regular electric cars with telematics can do. But Ford is offering a fleet-connected service too that allows companies with fleets of e-transits to know everything about their vehicles in real time, including who is driving, where they are en route, and what their vehicle state of charge is. Ford says that this is also great for allowing driver coaching to help drivers improve their driving style and energy efficiency on the road, and ensures that with fleets, drivers will not have to worry about authenticating charge stations using smartphone apps or RFID cards. 
That does seem to suggest that the e-transit, like several other new electric vehicles coming to market, will be compatible with the ISO 15118 vehicle to infrastructure standard that automatically authenticates a vehicle as you plug it into the charging station. If we look back to the stereotypical white van man in the UK of my youth, there may finally be no more excuses in that department for poor driving, since the e-transit comes with Ford's Copilot 360 system. It includes multiple cameras around the vehicle and active design safety features to keep the vehicle in the middle of the lane, and most certainly not barging through traffic like a mini tank on a mission. Since I know such features can usually be turned off by the driver, though, I am curious to know if Ford will allow fleet operators to mandate that those systems stay on or not. I guess that's another question I need to ask. Production of the 2022 Ford e-Transit will begin for the North American market next year at Ford's Kansas City facility, that's Kansas City, Missouri, not Kansas City, Kansas, with production launch starting towards the end of the year. Ford says it has more than 1,800 global commercial vehicle dealers and 645 commercial dealers in the US alone. Of those US dealers, 90% have already been certified to both sell and service the e-transit. It's not clear where European market e-transits will be made. Ford doesn't say, and I haven't heard back yet on where that will be, but it is worth noting that Ford Europe says a test fleet of e-transits will be sent to commercial customers early next year, with commercial rollout happening sometime after that. Finally, let's talk price. Ford says its MSRP for the e-transit in the United States will be around 45,000 US dollars. That's about US dollars more than the ICE cargo van starts at, and about $5,000 more than the ICE passenger van starts at. Considering that many commercial vehicles are leased rather than purchased outright, this could be a compelling buy, especially for people who have a base of operations in large cities that are well served by a charging infrastructure. As the first North American electric cargo van to head to market, there are other electric vans on sale already in Europe, like the Mercedes-Benz e-Sprinter, Renault Master ZE, and PSA's trio of sibling electric vans, to name a few. I'm really quite keen to see how the e-Transit is received in North America, if only because it's going to be coming to market ahead of the Ford F-150 electric pickup, a vehicle I really hope offers a vast improvement on the e-Transit's range, or... Yeah, it's not going to sell well because pickups are used very differently to vans. I guess we'll have to wait and see on that one, eh? That's it for today. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.